I, in this video, I shall take uh, the basics of a sigma bond and a pi bond and go to the complex matters. So a sigma bond is formed when there is a coaxial overlap. Coaxial overlap. Okay, so it has to be like this. Okay, means these two have to be formed. It has to be coaxial, means they have to occur along the same line. For example, x, x y y or z z in subsequent two minutes you will uh, know the clarity and the pi bond there is collateral overlap okay like this it has to be in this way okay now i shall be showing you the logic behind the formation of a sigma bond and a pi bond see let me take this as the p orbital let this be p x this be py and this to be pz all three have to be in mutually perpendicular planes okay you can see just do it with me okay now take another p orbital this has to be px py and pz okay now if i do the bonding of the middle fingers that is the x orbital or you can say the px orbital basically see the sigma bond is formed when you have to take the linear combination linear combination is possible here only in the first case or you can say in this case or in this case means like this but i will take the simplest case that is the px orbital okay see it is a linear bonding so a linear bond is formed when a sigma bond is formed okay so see now the left ones are py and pz now they are in parallel planes okay see py is parallel pz is parallel so these two are, have to form a pi bond these two have to form a pi bond and these two have to form a pi bond so there is no sigma bond formation uh, after a formation of a sigma bond means one sigma bond then other has to be pi then another has to be pi so this is the main logic that is used for deciding whether a sigma bond is formed or a pi bond is formed okay p pi d pi back bonding and d pi d pi back bonding okay so for this the element must have the d pi or d pi as vacant orbital the simplest example i would take will be of oxygen see it has no vacant d orbital as it is in the second period so it has no vacant d orbital but sulfur is in the third period so it has got vacant d orbitals vacant d orbitals now how to decide that if a p pi d pi back bonding is formed or some other type of simple bonding is formed so let me take a simplest example that can be h2so4 okay draw the structure for it h double bond o like this now see we can see two pi bonds but we have to decide whether it is between a p pi d pi or some other type of bonding so how to decide see oxygen and sulfur first take this bond sulfur has 3d vacant orbitals okay so it will use 3d orbitals for that bonding back bonding actually and oxygen will use 2p orbitals it neither has got 2d orbitals nor 3d orbitals so it has to use 2p orbitals so this will be a p pi d pi back bonding okay similarly for this it will be p pi d pi back bonding so how many p pi d pi bonds do i have see 2 p pi d pi so if a question is asked that how a coordinate bond is formed between these two so the basic trick that can be applied is see in the periodic table sulfur comes then it has to get two electrons for getting the noble gas configuration so we go for that we supply the electrons by the pi bond so i am supplying the electrons by this bond listen to it carefully i am supplying through this pi bond and this pi bond one one electron extra that is of oxygen okay so i have got the valency fulfilled now whatever extra pi bonds that we are getting they can be replaced by a sigma bond like this okay o o so now these extra sigma bonds that have been replaced are known as the coordinate bonds.
it is very simple let me take one more example for it like i have h3 po4 okay let me take p4 o10 because on hydrolysis it will give this so i'll take p4 o10 now drawing the structure for it the structure will be like this p4 place oxygen between o8 and o10 okay so this is a p4 o10 structure now i ask how many p pi d pi bonds are there so p pi d pi bonds is equal to first of all i have to find them see this will get a 3d orbital for uh, bonding and this will get a 2p orbital because it has only 2p orbital and it has 3d orbital full as vacant it does not have a 2d or 3d so it it has to apply for bonding through the 2p orbital only so it will take 2p orbital in use it will take 3d orbital in use so 1 2 3 4 so i get 4 now i hope that you are able to differentiate that when to get a p pi p pi bond and when to get a p pi d pi bond if d orbital is involved then it has to be p pi d pi bond okay so now next case number of coordinate bonds so i have to see that see phosphorus then it has to get three electrons for getting the noble gas configuration let me take this phosphorus as my basic case so it is like this it has to get three electrons for satisfying the valency so these three electrons can be gained from see this bond one electron extra one electron extra one electron extra okay so the valency is satisfied by these three bonds only so now this bond is extra we can say so now this will form a coordinate bond so actual representation for this bond will be this so this bond is known as a coordinate bond coordinate bond so how many coordinate bonds i will be getting in p4 o10 1 2 3 4 so i will get four coordinate 